You are listening to the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network. Visit PencilandPaperProductions.Podbean.com to find more great podcasts. Hello and welcome to As I Recall It, a podcast featuring stories and anecdotes of years past. Did they happen exactly as I said? Probably not, only as I recall it. Twenty twenty. What a year this has been. As I recall at the beginning of the year, I spoke of twenty twenty in retrospection. I looked back on a story I wrote when I was a kid that took place in twenty twenty and who I am now compared to who I was in years past. Little did I realize that the former tale that featured chaos and death would be closer to reality, even though the writing was clearly on the wall. We just refused to acknowledge it. As I began writing this piece, I'm not sure what I wish to discuss or emphasize. I don't want it to be a downer. The entire year has been more than enough. I guess my purpose is to chronicle this moment in time for myself and maybe for others as well, just in case some form of history is rewritten. As of this recording, COVID-19 has infected over 83 million people worldwide and killing 1.8 million of those infected. 20 million of those infected are in the United States, and over 343,000 of those 1.8 million have been U.S. citizens. These are facts. I remember when health experts were warning the public that if social distancing did not occur and masks were not mandatory, that we would see one million cases in no time. Such a sentiment seems quaint now as those concerns were clearly dismissed by so many. But I admit I brushed off concerns of the virus at first. I remember hearing reports of the virus popping up in China somewhere around November of 2019, although it could have been sooner than that. I took note of it, but I assumed it would remain locked down in the country. Then March of this year rolls around and I'm singing a different tune. I assumed as the rest of the world went into lockdown that the United States would do the same. But what happens when you assume? In fact, I actually went into self-imposed isolation for a month in hopes of helping the matter. The problem was that I was only one person and the rest of the country didn't follow suit. And while my actions could have prevented the spread of the virus to a number of people, it required a team effort to flatten the curve. But that's not something this country has seen since 2001. Eventually, the virus in America was no longer just a threat to your life, but a threat to your civil rights. A sentence that is baffling to say as it is to believe. If you stayed indoors, you were a fragile snowflake. If you wore a mask, you were branded yourself a liberal traitor to democracy. I personally was called stupid for wearing a mask in a store back in July, and my wife has recounted several times she too was harassed at a store for doing what I assumed we should all be doing. But I'm not a scientist, so who am I to assume what is the right approach? As all of this was going on, black America finally reached a breaking point. Time and time again, news outlets would report that a black man or a black woman, typically a black man, was shot and killed in an altercation with police. And no matter how shady the circumstances were, police were always portrayed as doing the right thing. These stories never sat right with me, so I can only imagine how it sat with someone who was black. With America struggling through the beginning of a pandemic, three major moments happening back to back to back signaled that enough was enough and it was time for change. The first was the murder of Ahmaud Aubrey. While jogging down the road, minding his own business, he was chased down and shot by two local rednecks because he looked like someone who was looting in the area. What proof did they have? Nothing more than speculation because of the color of his skin. He was black. The second was the murder of Brianna Taylor. As I understand the situation and have heard multiple reports regarding what happened to her, there are no justifiable actions by police. There's a lot to unpack with this situation, which is why I'm going to move along. And I don't mean to diminish her memory. Just know that I stand with Brianna. 
Lastly, but certainly far from least, the murder of George Floyd. The entirety of the world witnessed this moment due to onlookers recording the moment on their phones. Excuse after excuse was made to cover for the officers shown in the footage, but what happened could not be denied. And black America was done. Change had to happen. It had to happen now. And to make it happen, protests began all across America with surprising support from other countries as well. And while these protests haven't caused major reform, I'm truly hopeful that it will. Now, obviously it's easy for me to be hopeful in this situation. I'm not persecuted because of the color of my skin, so wanting it for someone else is a simple notion. But I want to be more than hopeful. I want to help be part of the solution. I have many black friends. Before this year, I never once took a moment to attempt to understand what life is like for them. Then I hear stories. I learn hidden histories of America. I begin to rethink what is right and what is wrong. I sit back and listen to black voices because it's a start in bettering myself. It's humbling to learn that as progressive as I thought I was, I could do better and still had much to learn. An interesting parallel to the country itself. As protests swept the country, a call for police reform followed, which was something that did not go over well. Just as the phrase, Black Lives Matter, was misinterpreted, so too was this call for action. Many took the phrase, defund the police, as a direct action to shut down police departments across the country. What this actually meant was to take funds away from the police departments and channel them into other departments and programs in an effort to help the police and alleviate unnecessary stress. There's no reason for the police to be called to a domestic dispute when a professionally trained social worker would be more appropriate. But no one wanted to hear the nuance of the conversation, just the headline that echoed their views. Nuance. Now that's something sorely lacking in this country today. It may not just be in the U.S. I'm just speaking from what I know. All of the conflict I have mentioned from within comes from a lack of conversation. And most conversations reach the most extreme point of view on either side that there is no room for nuance. Not everything has to be so black and white. Just because your opinions lean left doesn't mean that a right-leaning view isn't valid. I admit that my views lean very liberal, but I have a few conservative viewpoints that I lean toward as well. We all like to believe that our point of view is right and that anything opposing it is wrong. But what's wrong with an open conversation in which you could change your mind or possibly change the mind of others? More can be heard when no one is shouting. Between a modern plague and civil unrest, there was fear of murder hornet swarms, monkeys stealing COVID samples, government footage of UFOs, and a star collapsing into a black hole. All of these things weren't groundbreaking moments, but insane little blips in a roller coaster year. I struggled to find positivity in this year, something that changed for the better in some way. I guess getting movie theaters at home was cool, even though pickings were slim, plus theater owners are panicking, thinking their livelihood is at an end. Look, I love the big screen experience and cannot wait until I feel safe to go back and watch certain movies on the big screen again. But who knows when that'll be? Until then, I'll gladly pay for the option to watch at home. I know it doesn't help theaters, but for me, personally, the risk isn't worth it. One highlight for me this year was the birth of my grandson. It's something that brought me joy. I got to see his smile, I got to hear him laugh. It's a, a little moment that I have for myself. Hopefully you have moments of personal joy you can look back on. Something to be grateful for for this year. As I say this, I know that we've all suffered a loss of some kind this year. Many of us lost jobs because of the virus. Many of us lost family members because of the virus. Lives shattered for one reason or another, compounded by this plague that in this day and age, should have never been unleashed upon the world in this way. I never imagined that I would experience a global pandemic in my lifetime. 
I assumed we were long past something of this magnitude. Furthermore, I never would have imagined that so many people would choose to tempt fate by boldly claiming that the virus wasn't real or wasn't that bad. It felt like an insult to everyone who was affected and disrespectful to the memory of those it killed. As this year comes to a close, I can see reasons to be optimistic. The biggest one is the promise of not one but two vaccines to combat the virus, maybe three. All are reported to be highly effective and distribution has slowly begun. Some may also look at the new presidential administration as another positive, while others will view it as the biggest negative of the year. I am personally viewing it as hopeful, but until I see results, I intend to remain on the fence. You can promise anything and not deliver. Heading into 2021, there are many things I look forward to. Numerous film and television projects I'm anxious to experience however I can. Finally releasing my newest project into the world and hoping for the best. Meeting my nephew Julius for the first time is something I am truly excited about. There are positive things to focus on in the next year, but none of us expected the nightmare of 2020. And there's no promise 2021 will be any better. I want to believe it will, but only time will tell. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed our stories. If you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash pencilandpaperproductions or pencilandpaperproductions.podbean.com and click become a patron in the top right hand corner. Remember, you can tell your friends to find us on the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network found on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you find your podcasts, and even youtube.com slash pencilandpaperproductions. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you'll join us again next time for more stories. This has been a Pencil and Paper Podcast Network production.